I hope I can be of help to uh, those who are in attendance. Uh, we have, we started out on our certified organic farm, just uh, um, growing produce. And uh, we discovered that there are times of year when you can't grow produce, of course, and you can't get any income. So uh, we slowly evolved into what I'm gonna talk to about today. Um, first of all, value added products. The, I'm a school teacher, so this is gonna be very simple. Everybody will be able to understand me. Uh, but what are they? Well, value added products are products that you make from the raw materials that you grow or that you buy. Um, an example, the example I use in this, I don't know what a bushel of wheat is going for now. I don't know if anybody out there would say it's not $4.57, but at the time that I put this slide together, it was. And uh, if you grow a bushel of wheat, you can sell it for $4.57. If you uh, decide that you want to turn that wheat into flour, you can make 42 pounds of flour. And now flour's either in a, well, it's a five pound bag. So you're talking about eight bags of flour. Uh, and we know that flour doesn't cost 80 cents uh, or 90 cents or a dollar. And so you see the value that's added once you just simply grind the, the wheat. Uh, 22, bushel, uh, 22 loaves of bread can be uh, made from that one bushel. And bread is now selling for, if you make it yourself, I, some markets sell it for eight or nine dollars a, a loaf, you know. So uh, that's an example. Um, value added products reduce waste on our farm. Uh, our compost heap has shrunk to practically nothing. Um, and that's one of the reasons is if you're selling at market and you have butternut squash that has a big chunk out of it or a rotten spot or it looks ugly, you can't really sell it at market, but you can certainly take the skin off, cut it in half, take out the seeds, put it in chunks and freeze it and sell it that way. Um, also, things like strawberries, if we pick them on a Monday, they're not gonna keep until Saturday for the market. If, if, they, if you pick them too early, they're not gonna be sweet. So if you pick them perfectly ripe, they're not gonna stay that long. So what we would do, we would, the Monday picking would go into the freezer. And then the, the Wednesday or Thursday picking would go to sell fresh at the market. We sell frozen strawberries during the winter for the same price as we sell fresh strawberries in the summer. So, uh, and if you go to buy frozen strawberries, uh, you will find that they're not perfectly ripe. That is, I don't know when they picked them or when they froze them, but they aren't, they don't have that wonderful taste that a perfect strawberry does. Uh, also value added uses market returns. That's one of the most uh, devastating things for a farm market uh, marketer is uh, to get all of this produce together and wash it and package it up and take it to market and nobody buys it and then you bring it home. What do you do? Um, so we can use, uh, when you value add it, uh, we can use those market returns. Maybe it would be cucumbers and turn them into pickles. So what can add value to products? There are three that I'm gonna talk about and then other ideas. And I would hope maybe some of you would, uh, I've gotten ideas from my audience many, many times. So um, freezing. Those, uh, there's a picture there, not very big, of our frozen strawberries. And you can put them on a sheet like that, stick them in a chest freezer and bag them up and keep them for a later sale. Um, we've also done this with green beans, with tomatoes. We didn't realize 
uh, initially that frozen tomatoes, let's, our cherry tomatoes are very sweet. You can freeze the cherry tomatoes just as they are, sell them in the winter for the same price that you sell a pint of cherry tomatoes in the, in the summer. And people like them and they, sometimes they'll, they'll bake them, bake or put them in the oven or they'll put them, we've actually freeze dried them and used them as what we call cherry tomato croutons. So you just put them on your salad, but the flavor is still there. Uh, one of the biggest things we're doing now, uh, we are um, making soups and we're selling them in two ways either frozen in a quart or freeze dried in a soup powder mix where you just add water. Purees, same way, you could, you could take sweet potatoes and make a puree out of it and not flavor it in any way. Then you could turn it into mashed sweet potatoes or you could turn it into a sweet potato pie, however you want to. Um, a friend of mine had a boys grow in Kansas City they had to throw away 1,200 pounds of butternut squash because they couldn't get rid of it. And um, you see, these. this is actually a picture of, yeah, uh, those are butternut squash that have been diced. Essentially, we just skin it, cut it in half, take out the seeds, run it through a, a process, food processor to dice it, and put it in a bag and freeze it. Um, people, I was talking to a uh, person here in the audience before that they, they have all these nice squash, pumpkins, various things that they aren't gonna keep all winter, but people do buy the processed butternut squash so they don't have all that work. They aren't throwing away half of it. Freeze drying is a process that we got started on with a Sarah Grant. And to be honest, we didn't even know what freeze drying was. Uh, we were putting this grant together. Amy was with me, uh, your former employer. And uh, I had heard about it, but I didn't really know what it was. And we have since fallen in love with the freeze dryer. Uh, the freeze drying process uh, is is different than dehydration. It's better in, than dehydration in most ways because it doesn't use high heat, doesn't take your herbs and blow heat uh, and air across them. Um, the herbs are have a greener color and a better flavor than dehydrated. Um, you can dehydrate apples. Uh, again, seconds can be used. You can slice them into rings. Uh, core them, of course, and then freeze dry them. And you've got these little freeze dried apple chips, which are healthy snacks. Ours, of course, are certified organic as well. Um, we have freeze dried to cherry tomatoes, uh, green beans, peppers. Uh, if you don't want to buy a whole green pepper, you just need a few peppers for your tomato sauce, for your spaghetti. You take them out of the bag and sprinkle them in there and then they rehydrate. Um, we've actually freeze dried onions and turned it into onion powder, which is uh, one thing we do sell is little jars of, of our herbs. Um, the other thing about freeze drying is that the, it doesn't change the flavor, whatever it tasted like when it went into the freeze dryer or when it came out of your pot, it comes out tasting the same. Um, we are selling lots and lots of freeze-dried soups now. Um, salad dressing mixes is a new product that we um, we uh, we put together in cute little jars where you can make your own ranch dressing or your own Greek Greek dressing or or chipotle ranch dressing by adding ingredients to it. Um, I didn't put this up there. Sometimes you fail. We tried. Um, baby food. We thought, how easy could that be? Uh, and it was. So you'd take green beans or you'd take butternut squash or you'd take sweet potatoes and you'd cook them down, freeze dry them, turn them into powder. And now all a mother has to do is add mother's milk or formula or water 
and they can make as little or, or as much as they want. They don't have to throw away half a jar or whatever. Uh, but for some reason, uh, we they didn't sell. And uh, we're not exactly sure. I, we didn't have a lot of babies, mothers with babies coming to the market. Maybe that was it. Somebody told me Wednesday, that's when all the babies come to the market. So uh, freeze drying keeps, once they're in the bag, they will keep for 15 to 20 years without refrigeration. So that you can take them on camping trips. You can put them in a drawer. Uh, you don't have to worry about continuously putting energy into keeping them cold. Okay. Here's some examples. The one at the, the uh, you did say there was a, the one on this side uh, shows the, the color difference. The top half is the freeze dried herb and the bottom half is the same herb that was dehydrated. So you can see they look like they're fresh. Uh, the, the bottom, which one of these buttons is the little, the little one at the bottom? Yeah, side button. Nope. Right. Well, anyway, that's the herb. This is the little uh, chives that were freeze dried. That's a carrot ginger soup mix. Um, and there you just add water. And then the laser or the laser, yeah. Oh, oh that one. Oh. Well, anyway, uh, canning is another thing. So we've talked about freezing, we've talked about freeze drying, and that equipment is expensive. It's about four or five thousand dollars. But um, SARE does do grants. Uh, they do not buy equipment, but they will buy tools and equipment is anything that's five thousand dollars or more so if you want to buy a tool a freeze drying tool it does qualify that's how we've we've gotten our freeze dryers uh pickles of course those that's where our we sell lots of cucumbers and we we make spicy pickles and we make pickled okra like it sells out immediately we make jams and jellies. Uh, we make an elderberry syrup that you uh, can put into hot water to make a, a tea, which is very good. We make salsas and sauces. There's the elderberries before they're cooked down. Other ideas. Well, the way we got these ideas was our first Sarah Grant. We went around to all the farmers in the Kansas City Food Hub and interviewed them and ask them what they did and any experience they had with value-added processing. Uh, some had made flour in the past, uh, teas, some baked goods, uh, some dehydrated things. Nobody had heard of a freeze dryer at that point. You can press oils, uh, you can juice things, you can make smoothie packets. Well, as I said earlier, we, this is kind of repeating myself, but what are the benefits? Uh, if you don't have to th throw something in the compost, uh, if you can turn it into value, uh, that's a win-win for everybody. Uh, and, and so processing seconds, things that are not, I mean, we do sell things, we call them um, cosmetically challenged tomatoes. And people laugh and then they buy them, you know, because we we reduce the price. But still, there are some things that you don't even want to take to the market that just don't look good. But they those those tomatoes uh, still taste good. Um, shelf life, um, certain times of year, everybody has tomatoes for sale, and so nobody need you know you you're taking them to market and you're bringing them back and you're not selling them. You don't want to drop the price too far, um, but you spent all that time and effort and now, now you got to throw it in the compost heap. Um, put them in the freezer. A friend of mine who ran several restaurants, he would buy cases of tomatoes 
and put the whole case into his freezer because he could make the mother sauces and the other sauces that he had later in the year. He could buy them when they were cheapest, when everybody had them. So if you have a freezer, you could preserve these until another time. Um, berries, I already talked about, cucumbers, okra, those perishable things. Um, you, you just don't want to put them in the compost heap. Also, you can sell throughout the year. You can sell, like we had a farmer's market last Saturday. And um, we didn't have one today because it's zero outside. But um, you can sell throughout the year. You can have a little bit of cash flow coming in. Our value added has gone. We are most of the year at our markets, and we sell fresh as well. It's the value added products are now about 65% of our income. And during this time of year, the only thing we have to sell are some butternut squash and some, some onions. And so they're close to 90, 95%. Um, people love jams and jellies. Um, you can also sell these things for higher prices. Uh, as we talked about the, the bushel of wheat becoming 22 loaves of bread, but even jams are selling, uh, if they're homemade and they're good, they're good quality, can sell for a little higher price. Uh, it also is pleasing to customers because of the convenience of not having, you know, I don't think skinning a butternut squash is that big of a deal, but some people would rather just buy the chunks of butternut without having to throw away half of it. Now, um, you need, there are several things, several hurdles, I would say, or th several things to think about. Uh, if you don't have your own kitchen, can you um, share somebody else's? And if you see the uh, two, uh, two, I've got two sources up here on my website, one for Kansas, one for Missouri, and I'll speak it out. But uh, the Kansas one is agriculture.ks.gov. And that one, tells you uh, where some of what they call incubator kitchens. So you can search for that online. Incubator kitchens are kitchens that are used by other people. Churches have them, community centers have them, and they can rent them out by the hour. This second one for Missouri, I just stumbled on it. It's, it's called thekitchendoor.com. And if you go in there and you type in your zip code, it'll tell you where your options are within your zip code. It's really quite a, a good website. Um, well, what did they do here? Some reason my picture for my canner didn't come out, but you know what a canner looks like. We're all electric at our, at our farm and um, we have a solar array. So our canner is an electric canner. Um, our freezers, of course, are electric. Um, where do you, where can you sell value added products? Well, we've talked about this. Um, you can sell them on your online website. You can sell them to retirement facilities, to schools, grocery stores. We do sell wholesale to certain grocery stores, winter markets, especially, uh, CSAs, farmers markets and food pantries. Um, what are the food safety hurdles? This, this is not in the purview of my presentation today because there are people that know and keep up with all of these things. Wanda Nwadike from K-State and University of Missouri uh, has, a, I, I will give you her link, a couple of, uh, of the sites where you can go and find out what, ha what are the regulations um, but you know, if you have meat in, in them, it's different. If you have, uh, anything like eggs or milk in them, that's different. All the regulations are more than I can tell you about today, but all the agencies, the USDA, the state agencies and the local, uh, do have regulations about food safety, which is good. 
there are two links to food safety. One is for the University of Missouri, and uh, one is the Kansas uh, Department. And uh, they even give work workshops on this for, for growers. Uh, if you want to know more about our details of our SARE grants, uh, you can go to our website, patandrachelsgardens.com, or you can go to SARE, www.sare.org, and look up these two grant numbers. Um, but my website, I think, has even more free information about that. There's uh, there's my contact uh PatandRachelsGardens.com or Dr. James R. Leak at gmail.com. So he is, for those who couldn't hear him, he's saying that if you use indirect sunlight to dry your herbs, uh, that they will also preserve their color and not, not change to gray like, like they do when they're dehydrated. And it's a lot cheaper than buying a freeze dryer.